Prophetess Deborah on this morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that all is well. Amen. <clears throat> May the Lord God bless everybody on today. Those that are watching right now and those that will watch. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Yes. So uh, last week, uh, those of you all who know that I have a YouTube channel. Last week, I put on my YouTube channel this verse. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. I put up this verse. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. And it says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he gets older, he shall not depart. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart. Amen. And the reason why I put that up on my YouTube channel last week is because like a little over a week ago, the Lord just gave me that verse. And so I said, well, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He said to me that most people think that this is just about a child, a literal kid, a literal baby. Us as parents raising our children, although physically, amen, to the physical eye, it would seem that way. Amen. But because the Bible, amen, is a book that is spiritual. Amen. It is very much spiritual in nature before it is physical. Amen. It's just that the Bible, the way God allows for us to understand it is that he puts it in a way where we can understand it as a parable or as a story, or he uses the lives of individuals, amen, that went through these things so that way we can understand, amen, what they went through, amen, and apply it to our lives. There are rules, there are laws, there are precepts, and we have to apply what's in the Bible to our lives, amen. So although it's put physical for us to understand because we are physical beings, it is very much spiritual in nature. So I said, okay, Lord, I said, okay. So it says that train up a child in the way he should go does not mean that it's for the children. It is, it is really for the adults, amen, because an adult was once a child. We all have to be born. We all have to grow. Amen. And we all have to mature. Amen. As a babe, as a, a, a child. Amen. We go to school. Amen. We go to elementary school. We go to pre-K. Amen. And we go on and we graduate. Amen. We wind up in college. We wind up graduating high school. We wind up going on to our careers. We go on. We move on. We grow. We grow. We grow. Amen. The way that God designed human beings, we are all supposed to grow. Nobody's supposed to stay stagnated in one particular area. Amen. Everybody grows. Amen. So we don't just stay a babe. I mean, you know, not unless that baby, honestly, in reality, just lost his life at an early age. But we all grow. As long as you have breath in your life, we all will grow. Amen. So God was saying it to me in a spiritual way, in a spiritual nature, that us as the body of Christ, we are the children. And he, he is the father. He is the one that's training us up in the way that we should go. Not necessarily the way that the world takes it. Amen. The way the world takes it is parents train up your child in the way that they should go. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, that's true. But we are the first children. Amen. When we die, amen, in the flesh, when we die to the flesh, amen, we, we get born again. We get baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. We have died just as Christ has died. When we come back up out of that, amen, we have now resurrected. And when we resurrected, amen, we are now a babe in Christ. And as we are then a babe in Christ, we begin to grow. Amen. And mature in Christ. Amen. There's also another Bible verse. Um, I don't have the exact uh, uh, place that it comes from, but it also says, if you spare the rod, amen, you spoil the child. Let me see if I can find it here. If you spare the rod, amen, you spoil the child. And what that means is, amen, is that we all need some kind of correction. Amen. Everybody needs correction. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Let me see if I pick it up right here. Okay, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Give me a minute here. Okay, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24 says, He who has spared, he who spares accountability hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. Amen. He who, 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 who spares accountability, hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. Amen. So what, what God is saying here is, amen, 
whoever spares the rod to their child, don't correct them, amen. Let them do what they want to do out there in this world, amen. Out there in their homes, giving them no rules, no restrictions or nothing, just letting them do what they want, amen. You are spoiling them, and since you're spoiling them, you don't love them, amen. And so since God is our Father, amen, and we are the child, amen, as I just read, it, read in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, amen, as I just read, we are the child, amen. It's the same thing. God is not going to spare his rod to spoil his child. God will not spare his rod to spoil his child. Good morning, no wake oh God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, Sandra, God bless you. God will never, never, I repeat, never spare his rod to spoil his children, okay? You may be in a place, a, a, a position as an apostle. You may be in a position as a prophet, a prophetess, an evangelist, a pastor, a leader in the fivefold ministry. It does not matter. God will not spare his children to spoil us because he knows that if he allows us to get spoiled, we will then lose out. God doesn't desire for none of us to lose our lives, amen? But what it is, is about right now, is it's repentance time. It is time for a repentance of the nations. It is time for us to rise up in Christ. It is time for us to grow up in God. Amen. And the only way that we can grow up in God really fully and maturely is to get the rod. Amen. God has to give correction. He has to teach us all over again as the body of Christ, because at the end of the day, we were taught the wrong things. We were taught the elemental things of the world. We were taught things that was the doctrines of the devil. We were, we were taught other things than what God's true design and desire was for the church. So a lot of us right now are still in a babe immaturity position, amen, because of the fact that we still have to die and get stripped to certain things, amen. We have to get stripped of certain things, amen. God gave this to me about a week ago. There are two kinds of strippers. There is a stripper that gets stripped from the outside. That means it's, it's the Pharisee type of individual, the way that God gave it to me. They get stripped on the outside. They put new clothes on. They look like an evangelist. They look like a Christian. But at the end of the day, they are just stripped outwardly. Amen. That's a physical stripping. But God also said there's another stripping. There's a stripping that is one that is inwardly. Amen. And when that inward stripping takes place, something changes on the outside. Why? Because it's a spiritual thing first before it manifests in the physical. So the spiritual will always take place first. If not, and we try to do it backwards, and we try to operate in the physical realm about everything, then guess what? It will never change. It will only be temporary. It will, shall never change. Amen? So we've got to move beyond, okay? So God said that that second stripping is the one that is renewed. Their mind is renewed, amen? Their heart is renewed, amen? Everything is renewed inwardly, which will now manifest outwardly, amen? You can't tell a babe in Christ. None of us can tell a babe in Christ, go change your clothes. You look like this. You look like that. No, we have to accept them the way that they are. Why? Why? Because... If we just hurry up and correct them in certain areas, what's going to happen? We will lose that individual. They will be lost, amen, to the kingdom of God because of our mistakes, amen. But, but, but we can correct, amen, in a humble way, amen. We can say, listen, um, you know, God is taking you to another level. You know, we can speak to them how God is allowing us to speak to them. But we have to be careful, amen. So at the end of the day, that's only because that's a new convert. That's a new believer, amen. But when that person gets the power, listen to me, the power of the Holy Ghost, something inwardly will now change because what's indwelling in me, what's indwelling in us is greater than that that is dwelling in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Good morning, Prophetess Kim. Good morning. God bless you on today. I pray that all is well, your health and everything is well on today. God bless you. So everything on the inward, amen, will change. And then the physically, that person will feel that conviction on the inside and say, wow, God is telling me to change my clothes. God is telling me to make my skirts a little longer. God is telling me to do this this way. Don't want, if I'm a don't have your pants too tight where everybody can see everything. <clears throat> God will begin to change the individual and they will now change and conform to that which is of a holy nature and not the patterns of the world anymore. Amen. But train up a child in the way that they should go because when they get old, they will not depart. Proverbs chapter 22, 6. Then again, spare the rod and spoil the child. God is not going to spare the rod and, and spoil anybody in ministry. 
that's just the bottom line. He's not going to spare the rod for anyone. So right now, this is a season for repentance. This is a season for correction. And God is just calling it out the way it is. T-I is. God is calling things out the way it T-I is. It is what it is. Amen. And he will no longer spare the rod for anybody because he loves all of us. Amen. And correction, when it takes place, that's when we become changed. Amen. But we have to be able to accept the corrections. Good morning, um, uh, Janet. God bless you on today. We have to be able to accept the corrections that God is giving. Amen. If we are not teachable, amen, then we have a problem. Earlier this year, around January, February, God gave me a book title and it was concerning, it was concerning school. And God was telling me the different type of teachings that take place in this school. But it was a very, of course, spiritual school. And it was telling me about the children, the students of Satan and the students of him. The students of Satan, amen, they are never corrected. They operate in pride. They operate in many other things that show that the fruits is of the enemy, amen. But the children of God operate differently. We eat the fruits of the word, amen. We get corrected. We have no issues. We obey what God is telling us. Sometimes it does hurt. Sometimes it does cut. The sword cuts. The word is the sword. It will cut, but we can accept the, 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 the criticism, amen, the good criticism, amen, and learn from what we do. Learn from our mistakes, amen. This is how God operates, amen. So I have a couple of verses here that I will go through. I will not be long this morning, amen. Amen, I will not be long. I'm happy to hear that. God bless you, Prophet and Kim. I will not be too long on today, amen. I will just be on a few more minutes, but I wanted to give this as God allowed me to uh, uh, to put it, amen, this morning, amen. So Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14, that is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14 says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. The basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. Since he is a child, remember, I told you, the Bible when it says train up a child is not talking about just children. We are God's children, amen? You need milk, not solid food. Not solid, uh, give me one second. Not solid food for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment, trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. This is what the church has been lacking. My God, my God, my God. This is what the church has been lacking is discernment. We have been lacking discernment. And discernment right now in this time, this day and age, it is imperative. It is crucial. We need to grow in our the areas of discernment. Amen. We need to be able to rightfully discern what is coming from the flesh and what is coming from the spirit of God. Amen. What is coming from the flesh and what is coming from the spirit of God. Because, amen, God does correct. God is a God of correction. Amen. God is a God of love. Amen. He loves everybody, but God will not hold back his rebuke and he will not hold back his correction. We see powerful people in the Bible who lost their lives because they could not get taught. They were not teachable. They were not learnable. And God does not desire that. So he will call the prophets. Amen. He will call the prophetess. Amen. He will call the apostles. Amen. He will call the evangelists. Amen. He will call the five Old ministry leaders to get out and correct and to do his job no matter what it takes, no matter the rejection that we receive, no matter who laughs and who giggles and who ridicules, God says my word shall go forth. God says my people shall mature. And if they don't, well, people of God, the same vision that God gave me earlier this year, amen, that they will be cut down, cut off, and decapitated. Cut down cut off and decapitated. It sounds very mean. It sounds very ugly. It sounds ungodly, but God is a God of corrections. Amen. God will not play. He will not play about his word. He will not play about his co corrections. He will not play, play about his precepts nor his laws. Amen. And when we operate contrary to what God has told us to operate in and how God has told us to, be, to the believers and the body of Christ to do certain things in righteousness, as I just read, then guess what? We're operating in a worldly manner. We're operating 
operating in a form of witchcraft because the Bible says rebellion is like that of a witchcraft. So we are reaping all the negative benefits from operating in witchcraft. Amen. That means operating in the spirit of Jezebel, operating in the spirit of Delilah, operating in these seductive ways of the world. Amen. So we've got to self-examine. One thing about me, I tell you, I would always self-examine. Amen. And if somebody comes to me with correction and I know because I do have discernment and I know that the fruit is coming from God, I will shut my lips and I will take the correction because the Bible says, spare the rod. Spoil the child. Turn up the child in the way that they should go. So when they get mature, they shall not depart. Amen. But then he also has a scripture that says every strip scripture is good for correcting. Amen. Teaching. Amen. It's, it's good for those things. It's God breath. So it does all. It does not only talk about love. Of course, love is the most important thing, but it also talks about correction. It also talks about rebuking and it also talks about teaching. And we ought to be at a place of teaching. We will never stop learning. I don't care if we get a thousand years old. We will never stop learning. And if us as the body of Christ think that we can stop learning, in the midst of our lives that we have arrived and we have reached a state of maturity where we will never learn, we've got it all backwards. We need to be relearned again, as the verse said in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. We ought to get retaught, relearn, and take the course over and over and over until we are able to pass the test of maturity. Amen? Amen? Good morning, uh, Prophetess Marie. God bless you on today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord be with you on today. Amen. First Corinthians chapter three, verse one to three. First Corinthians chapter three, verse one to three says, but I brothers could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. For you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready. For you are still of the flesh. Amen. For while there is jealousy. Amen. And strife amongst you. Are you not of the flesh? And behaving only in a human manner. Amen. So like I was saying earlier. The vine dresser is coming. Yes he is. Yes he is. God is not playing. God wants to. He wants the people to come to full repentance. Amen. And what he told me earlier. Amen. I think it was over the weekend. Amen. As I was riding my bike, that's my time with God. When I ride my bike, boy, I tell you, I be praying and I, God just be talking to me while I'm riding that bike where that fresh air hit my face. Amen. He told me just last week and I believe that just passed. And he said to me, tell my prophets to get on one accord. Amen. I will return soon. Amen. I'm coming. Tell my prophets to get on one accord. Amen. There will be a gathering of my people. Amen. And he's talking about the leaders. They're gathering. Amen. To come on one accord for correction. Amen. For the church to be without spot, blemish and wrinkle for Christ to return. Amen. So that means that there are times that the word, the sword of God will cut. It separates the soul, the spirit, the bone and the marrow. That's a, that's a hard sword. That's a, that's a sharp sword that cuts. It's going to separate and divide. It's going to tear the wheat, amen, from the flowers, amen. It's going to tear out the negative things, amen, to get us in the rightful position and the rightful, rightful place of God so that way when he returns, his bride is not stained. His bride has not been violated. His bride has not been raped. Let's be real. His bride has been untouched, but yet in a position where she is still pure for God, amen. It's the reality of it. Amen. And we've got to come at a place where no matter who we are, amen, we can take the criticism of God coming from God to discipline the leaders. People of God, this is the season for the leaders. Believe it or not, this is the season for the leaders. And the leaders ought to know that if you cannot get corrected in 2020 during the time of Corona, I pray, my God, my God, my God, Jesus Christ, I pray that you make it to 2020. That is my sincere prayer of sincerity for us, the body of Christ, that we make it to 2021. Excuse me, 2021, that we make it through even the beginning of the year, the end of this year. Because God is cutting down, cutting off, and decapitating those who are making the body of Christ violated. Those who are raping the individuals of Christ, who are violating it, amen, who are taking the purity out of the pure. God is not playing with the leaders. This season is a season for the leaders, amen. He's saying to stop, stop, strip, 
strip, take it away, take it away, do with it, come out of your flesh, come out of your flesh. God says to come out of the flesh, get off of the milk, get off of the bre breast milk, get off of the formula and come on, move on, step up to the next level, get to the full course meals, the three, the four, the five entree meals, get to that full meal where you will get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I will keep you throughout all things, even through my correction, even through my rebuke, I will hold you. I will make you stand firm, even through the rejection as you speak and teach my word. And people are ridiculing you because they're rejecting you. But then again, they're not rejecting you or I. They are rejecting the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us. Because again, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. We ought to be teachable. We ought to be learnable. Amen. We will never arrive. Again, I say never arrive until we meet our making in heaven. If we arrive there, the only way to arrive there is to stay at a place and a position of a child, but yet be mature. That means stay in a child's place. Me, you, all of us have to stay in a child's place. That means we stay at a place of humility. Remember the Bible says, I can, you cannot make it in unless you are like that of a child. That means you got Excuse me. That means you got to constantly be learnable, be teachable, amen, to get and to arrive at that place in maturity. That means we stay low, but mature at the same time. If you guys can understand, I'm trying to put it the way everybody can understand. That means we stay low at the feet of our father because we are the child. We are the servant. We are the ministers. We are the prophets and everybody, but we still never elevate to the point where we're higher than our master. We are still at his feet, amen. In all of our maturity, in all of our dream teachings, in everything that we're doing, even myself, we never go higher than God. We stay at his feet. And that is a place that is humble. That is a position that is humble. That is a teachable way. Amen. But when we rise up higher and higher, like I did a few weeks ago, the I wills of Lucifer, and we see what happened to Amnon, we see what happened to Absalom, we see all these different spirits that happened. We see that what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar's son and Daniel, we see what happened with Haman and Esther, then we see what that type of pride can do, amen? And if we can't take criticism and correction, amen, then my God, my God, my God, woe to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law. Woe, woe, and woe does not mean I feel sorry. Woe means, oh my God, you better be careful and you better get it right now. That's what woe means. God is not playing. He's coming back from a for a church without spot nor wrinkle. He's coming back from his for his bride, and his bride will not be tainted. She will not be perverted. She will not be touched. The bride has got to be pure for the groom. That's just the bottom line. God is not playing. He's not playing this season. My God, I, I you know I feel that overwhelming sensation to cry because that's how God gives me. God gives me his emotions when he deals with me. He deals with all his prophets differently. But me, I always feel that crying emotion because the sorrow that is in my father, amen, the sorrow that is in him. He does not want his people to, 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 go, to, to go astray, to be led astray. But, but then again, he wants us to be obedient. Stay at a place of a child, amen. My God, my God, oh my God, Jesus, help us, help our nations. My God, help the nations, help the nations, help the nations. God, 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 hallelujah. God keeps saying, cry out, cry out to him, cry out for him to correct us, cry out, cry out, cry out to our father, amen. Cry out, amen, because we are babes to him in all of our teaching and all of our learning, but yet still mature in the way that we can go out and go forth and do what thus says the Lord, amen. My God, my God, my God, help us, Lord, help us, Jesus, help us, Jesus, help us, Lord, help us, Jesus, my God. My God, help us, Jesus. Help the believers. Help the body of Christ. Help the leaders, Lord God. Help the leaders. Help the leaders. Help the leaders. Help the leaders. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every spirit of discord and strife. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every backbiting spirit. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every spirit. A spiritual retaliation in the name of Jesus. We bind up every word curse in the name of Jesus. We bind up the word curses in the name of Jesus. And we cast it into the dry, deserted places in the name of Jesus. I come against every seed of discord. I come against every seed of strife right now in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. My God. The Lord just told me just right now, my God, hmm. 
Jesus. Mm. God just said to me just right now while I was speaking, the wicked shall be cut down. This is not a joke. <sighs> Jesus, this is not a joke. God says the wicked, my wicked, the wicked people shall be cut down. He just released that to me. The wicked shall be cut down. This is not playtime. It is not play, play time. Body of Christ leaders. It is not play time. It's not play time. Mm. My God. First Peter chapter two, verse two says, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. You see, it says the pure spiritual milk. That means when we start off, we can't even get a tainted milk. Because if we get the tainted milk, that means when we learn the wrong way, even that milk will make us sick. Think about it. There are some babies. I'm a mother who breastfed all of my children. Amen. And there are some babies, amen, who cannot take the other milk. They cannot take formula. They only can take the pure milk, which is that of the breast milk. Amen. The lactation of their mother. And so guess what? Even if that milk, Holy Spirit, I thank you for showing me this. Even that milk. If that milk is tainted because the mother's drinking, amen, my God. If the mother's breastfeeding and she's drinking alcohol and she's taking drugs, that baby will get sick. May even die, amen. But because the, 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 the breast milk is pure, if they're eating the fruits that are good while they're breastfeeding, that baby will grow up healthier than that. If people don't want to hear the truth, but that of the other milk. But of course, sometimes, and I'm not going to stay on here long, people get on, you know, they have to take, give their baby the other milk. Of course, we understand there's medical reasons. There's all kinds of other things. But I'm just showing an example, amen, because that's the man-made milk. But God gave us the milk, amen, to feed our babies with, to be healthy, amen. And I'm just using an example. I'm not saying nothing negative against nobody, but I'm using that as an example. So when you even feed the baby from the beginning with a tainted, perverted milk, they become sick. We see that right here. Like newborn infants, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. That means if the milk is tainted, now the body of the baby will be tainted. And as we grow up, we will grow up in maturity, tainted. So that means we won't really be mature. We'll still be immature, amen? Because our body is not growing correctly, amen? It lacks some nutrition, amen? So we've got to be very careful, you got to be very careful. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature in manhood. That means we ought to grow to get to that manhood. And it's not just speaking about men, but it says manhood, womanhood. We ought to grow and get to that level in Christ. Amen. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That means that holiness has a standard. That's what it's saying. Holiness has a standard. Amen. We ought to be corrected. We ought to be teachable. We ought to be learnable. Amen. To the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer, amen, be children. And listen what it says here carefully. Tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. We know what a hurricane does. We know what a tornado does. It carries things about. It causes chaos and disaster. It even kills people and destroys people in the midst. It destroys their homes. It destroys things. Amen. Tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. By human cunning. By craftiness in deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we ought to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Amen. That means if we don't get cut by the word, by the sword of the spirit. Amen. If we don't get dissected and divided, amen, get our open heart surgeries, amen, get our brain surgeries, amen. If we don't get that done, get our mind renewed, amen, get our hearts renewed and our body renewed, we will fail. We will be, what it says, tossed to and fro by every cunning craftiness and deceitful scheme that is coming from the human people, amen, us. The body of Christ, those that are out there who think that they have matured so much that they cannot be taught and learned 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That can't be taught and learned by the power of God. God is a teacher, first and foremost. He taught. He taught so that people can mature. Amen. When the disciples were with him, they didn't just become disciples that quick. Yes, he called them to be disciples, but they had to walk with Christ. Amen. They had to get to a level of maturity. Amen. We see that with Peter when he cut off the ear. They had to get to a level of maturity and realize they cannot operate in the flesh, but they had to operate in the fruits of the spirit. Amen. They had to operate the way Christ was operating when he took them with them, amen? And then he trained them, amen? Then he grew them up from children, from babes in Christ to full maturity. He says, now I leave you. Now I've got to go. Now it is finished. Now I've called you to go forth and to make disciples of all the nations. But you've got to be in that place of maturity. You've got to be in the place of of maturity in all of the areas, not in some areas, but in all of the areas. And if we have not grown to that in some areas, that's fine. We can learn, amen, but we got to be corrected. We got to be able to be corrected, amen. That's what it takes is correction. Correction in the body of Christ for us to be without blemish, spot, and wrinkles, amen. God seeking you as a precious jewel, beautifully sister of God. God bless you, uh, Pedro Mike. God bless you on today. God bless you. But yes, God is just correcting because right now, like I said, it's the time for the body of Christ, the prophets, the apostles, the leaders. They are getting cut down, cut off, and decapitated. And if we don't see it physically, remember, it's a spiritual word. It's a spiritual Bible. If we don't see it physically, you better believe that spiritually they have left Christ a long time ago. They are teaching doctrines from their lips with no fruit. Doctrines from their lips operating and acting and imitating and just speaking like a puppet. Like a puppet. And it's not God pulling the strings. It's the enemy pulling their strings. So we got to be careful. Make sure that we are not operating like a puppet, but coming from a place of humility, a place from serving, and a place for doing what God has called us to do, knowing that we can be corrected. Amen. We can be corrected, amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I come to you as humble as I can, Father God, on today. I'm thanking you for your word, Father God. I pray that it was fruitful, fruitful and it multiplied, Father God. I pray that it touches each and every individual that it shall touch on today, Father God. I pray that they learn something, Lord God, that we are children, Father God, in your midst, Father God. I pray that they learn, Father God. I pray that they touch, Lord God. And I pray that us as believers, Father God, us, myself, each and every one of us, that we stay at a place of humility. We stay at a place where we can get corrected by you, Father God. I pray that sincerely for us as the leaders, Father God, in the body of Christ, Father God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for another day of life. I thank you for another day of teaching and ministering your word, Father God. And I just thank you for everybody that watched, Father God. I pray blessings upon their lives. I pray prosperity as their soul prospers over their life. And I pray for even their homes. Amen. I pray, I pray for their homes, Father God, that peace be still. Peace be still unto their homes. Peace be still unto their minds and to their hearts, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. May you go out and be fruitful in the Lord on today. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everyone.